Buddham Givitam Yavanibhanam Saranam Gacchami Yecha Buddha Atita Cha Yecha Buddha Anagata Pachupanna Cha E Buddha Angvandami Sambhada Nathi Me Saranam Anyam Buddha Me Saranam Varam Yetena Satcha Vajjena Otume Jaya Mangalam Utta Mangena Vandeyam Pada Pansu Arutta Mang Buddheyo Kalito Doso Buddho Kamatu Tamma Mang Buddham Jeevitam Yavanibhanam Saranam Gachami Buddham to the Enlightened One Jeevitam Lifespan Yava up to as far as Nibbanam Cooling Emancipation Saranam Refuge Gachami I go I go to the Enlightened One for refuge for life, to attain complete emancipation from suffering. Yecha Buddha Atitacha, Yecha Buddha Anagata, Ye, which, whichever, Cha, and Buddha, the Enlightened One, Atitacha, and in the past, Yecha, and which, Buddha, Enlightened One, Anagata, not yet come. And to all past Buddhas, as well as those yet to come. Pachupanancha ye Buddha, Ahangvandami Sabbada. Pachupanancha, the present. Ye, which, Buddha, Enlightened One, Ahang, I, Bandami, Worshipping, Sabbada, Daily. Now I worship the Enlightened One daily. Nati me saranang anyang, Buddho me saranang varan. Na, not. Ati, present. Me, my, saranang, refuge, anyang, any other, buddho, the enlightened one, me, my, saranang, protection, varan, better. I do not seek any other refuge, for the Buddha's protection is superior. Etena satchavajena hotume jayamangalam Etena, this, satcha, true, vajena, vow, hotu, is, me, my, jaya, victory, mangalam, auspicious. This unbreakable commitment is my auspicious victory. Uttamangena vandehang padapang suvaruttamang Uttamangena with the head Vande ahang I adore Padapang su foot dust Varuttamang highest favor Worshipping his foot dust with my head is my highest benediction Buddheyo kalito doso buddho khamatu tang mamang Buddheyo by the enlightened one kalito doso fault of speaking indistinctly 
Buddho, the Buddha. Kama tu, pardon. Tang, that. Mamang, me. O enlightened one, please pardon me if I commit the fault of speaking indistinctly while chanting the Purita. Buddham givitam yavanibbanam saranam gacchami Yecha buddha atita cha Yecha buddha anagata Pachupanna cha e buddha angvanda misambhada Nathi me saranam anyam buddho me saranam varam Yetena satcha vajjena otume jaya mangalam Uttamangena vandeyam padapansu aruttamam Buddheyo kalito doso buddho kamatu tammamam I go to the enlightened one for refuge, for life, to attain complete emancipation from suffering and to all past Buddhas as well as those yet to come. Now I worship the Enlightened One daily. I do not seek any other protection, for the Buddha's protection is superior. This unbreakable commitment is my auspicious victory. Worshipping his foot dust with my head is my highest benediction. O oh, Enlightened One, please pardon me if I commit the fault of speaking indistinctly while chanting the Purita. So now let's examine these verses in detail. This is a continuation of the Buddha Vandana from the beginning, from the previous video. It opens with a commitment I go to the Enlightened One for refuge, for life. This is not something to be taken lightly. When one approaches a teacher, especially a teacher as exalted as the Buddha, uh, really there is no equal to a personality like the Buddha. He is giving knowledge not given by any other teacher in history because he makes it possible to attain complete emancipation from suffering, complete freedom. Other teachers want us to make a commitment as well, but they require a commitment to eternal service, servitude. Whereas the Buddha, he's saying, take this knowledge, study it, learn it, apply it in your life, and then you're free. You're free to do whatever you want to do. He doesn't attach any strings. He doesn't want to become our master forever. He just wants us to benefit from the results of his own research into the reality, into the actual human life, and attain complete emancipation from suffering. But to do that, we have to make a commitment. We have to make a promise. We have to develop integrity. Integrity is the gateway to enlightenment. And this integrity is measured by our ability to keep our promises, among other things. So the promise made here is that we will take refuge. We will approach the Buddha for protection. And we will accept him as a teacher for life. That is the price, the price of admission to the Eightfold Noble Path. And this cannot be faked. A lot of people want to pretend to be disciples of the Buddha. They want to pretend to be big Buddhists or big monks. But actually we see that they're unwilling to follow the precepts. They're unwilling to make the commitment to, to wear the robes, to live the life of a disciple. So this is not actually uh, good integrity. And because of this, they miss. They miss the beginning of the path. And then they try to claim, oh, I'm on the path. But how can you be? Because you missed the beginning. 
The beginning is this commitment to take refuge for life in the Enlightened One, in the, his teaching, the Dhamma, and in the Sangha, the community of disciples, the monks. Now the next verse. We also take refuge in all past Buddhas as well as those yet to come because the quality of those Buddhas is all the same. It is not that the Buddha, Sakyamuni Buddha, uh, speculated or manufactured a teaching. He did not, as he says, hammer it out on the anvil of the intellect. Rather, he observed the reality within himself and within others, and how life comes and goes, how it passes, and the different stages that it goes through. And from that he formulated his teachings, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Noble Path. So all those Buddhas observed the same thing, and they came to the exact same conclusions. There's a whole class of Buddhas that we don't even know about called Pratyeka Buddhas, who chose not to teach. When one becomes a Buddha, he has to make the decision, is he going to teach or not? Because to teach, one has to uh, tolerate a great number of offenses and uh, other things that are not uh, really comfortable. So a Buddha has to make the decision whether he's ready to teach or not, depending on his will. He has complete freedom. And those who don't teach, or those who do teach, there's actually no difference. We can't say that one is better, for, better than the other. Of course, we benefit more from the ones who do teach, but those who don't also have the same benefits. So, we take shelter of them as well. Next. Now, in the present, Pachupanancha sort of and now, <laughs> after having made this commitment, I worship the Enlightened One daily. So this is not something that one takes up as a weekend hobby. No, this is a lifestyle. Once one takes shelter, once one takes refuge, it's expected that he will continue to increase his knowledge, his practice, and to uh, advance in meditation and in pious activities for the rest of his life. Uh, this is not just a uh, fashion. It's not just a religious fad. But it's something that one takes up as a lifetime, daily, full-time activity as one focuses his life on the teaching of the Buddha. That's what's required to get the result. And additionally, he says, I do not seek any other refuge, for the Buddha's protection is superior. So there are so many false refuges in life, money, power, sense pleasure, all kinds of various identities and uh, designations in life. One may try to become famous, an artist, a politician, a sports star, or any of these other varieties of beingness, uh, even a deva, or even a brahma, or even one of the uh, black and beautiful gods in the highest heaven. But this is not actually going to give you the benefit that the Buddha is offering. Because the Buddha is offering something superior to every other teacher. He's offering complete freedom from becoming. Because becoming is the cause of suffering. To do this, he gives an eight-step process, an eightfold path. And this path is also a path of becoming. But it leads us to a type of becoming where we can give up becoming. It leads us to 
a place of pleasure and enjoyment that is superior to any other pleasure or enjoyment, such that we can give up the need to become someone, to be someone, to be somewhere, to be something. This is superior to any other path. It's very difficult to understand because our habit for millions and millions of lives is to become, to be, and then to try to act, to enjoy. But the Buddha is offering something superior to that, and so we should take exclusive refuge of his teaching and not look for refuge in any other thing. Of course, it's necessary to take care of the body, to eat, to sleep, to uh, take care of various other bodily functions. But other than that, we should concentrate fully on comprehending the Buddha's teaching because it's actually superior to every other teaching. Before I became a Buddhist monk, I was a guru, a Vedic guru, and I was writing books on Vedanta and things like that, teaching. However, even after becoming very highly self-realized in that path, I still had anxiety. I still had subtle suffering. So I gave it up and I went to research various alternatives and came up with the teaching of the Buddha. Now I'm a Buddhist monk. Why? Because the Buddha's protection is superior. And anyone who tastes it, anyone who actually follows his instructions, can experience it for himself. And then he says, This unbreakable commitment is my auspicious victory. The victory is in the very commitment itself. The victory is in the taking the refuge itself. How is that? Well, this is called entering the stream. When one realizes the actual position of the teaching of the Buddha, the actual exaltation, uh, the unique and powerful nature of this teaching, then he cannot do anything but serve that teaching until he attains the result, whether it's in this lifetime or the next lifetime or as long as seven lifetimes in the future, he is going to attain enlightenment. When one first comes to this teaching, one may be bewildered because it's so different from everything else we've ever experienced. Or if one is born into a Buddhist family, he may be bewildered by different religious concepts of Buddhism or customary social concepts of Buddhism that are actually different from the original teaching of the Buddha found in the suttas. However, once one understands that original teaching, once having seen the exalted nature of that teaching, the superior nature of that teaching, then there's no longer any possibility that he could break that commitment. There's literally nothing better in the world than this teaching. That is already the victory. Uh, the victory over suffering is already finished. It's already in the bag, so to speak. Uh, it's going to happen because of one's commitment of taking refuge. If he takes refuge of the original teaching and not some uh, counterfeit. So the commitment of taking refuge is not something that we do lightly. Uh, it should be with the aim of making a lifetime commitment and attaining the final goal of the teaching, Nibbana. Next, the next two lines are a devotional prayer. Worshipping his foot dust with my head. Now, this is not something we see in the West or in westernized Eastern society. People worshipping by bowing down and putting their head in the dust of the feet. Because in these days, we, we live in an age of decline where even the best men have serious flaws and shortcomings. So we may think, well, that's all there is, 
And so I shouldn't bow down to anyone. Everybody has faults. So I shouldn't worship any other being. However, this would be a mistake because the teaching of the Buddha is being passed down by disciplic succession from the Buddha himself. That means those who are situated, and especially those who are senior monks in that tradition, are in a position to benefit us. They may not be perfect. We certainly aren't perfect. And there's imperfections in the Sangha as well. After all, it's been 2,500 years or more since the Buddha. We've already degenerated quite a bit since those days. We're not perfect, but we have a perfect teaching, and that is the teaching in the suttas. So by worshiping the foot dust of the Buddha means worshiping the monks, worshiping especially the senior disciples in the Sangha. This is my highest benediction. Why? Because by this service, I obligate them to help me. A person who has integrity, a person of worth, of value, should be worshipped, should be served, should be offered all kinds of presents and so on and praise and etc. Why? Because by seeing this, they become obligated. A person of integrity will not forget what we have done for him, and he will bless us. They have the power, those who are self-realized have the power to transmit this teaching in a mysterious way. And the way it works is by karma, kama that by worshipping the monks, by worshipping those who are self-realized, who are situated in the parampara, the disciplic succession from the Buddha, we generate a kind of kama that is unequaled in its ability to grant spiritual benediction. So the devotional activities in the line of the Buddha are not like blind faith, worship, found in other religions, but a scientific way of generating a special type of kama that leads to enlightenment. And finally, he prays, O oh, enlightened one, please pardon me if I commit the fault of speaking indistinctly while chanting the paritta. In chanting mantras, there are three important aspects. Mantra, meaning the text itself. Matra, meaning the rhythm of the text. And Raga, which means the tune. The Raga used in chanting Buddhist stotras or stuttas uh, are very simple, only three or four notes. Any more than that, and the Buddha said it's a song, and that's prohibited. But the Matra, and the mantra are very important for getting the uh, full result of these prayers. That's why we're presenting these videos. So you can hear someone very experienced. My teacher Vimaladama has been chanting these all his life. And he's very expert in the mantra and matra. So you should listen to those, even if the raga is not perfect. That... The proper chanting of these prayers, of these paritta suttas, has immeasurable benefits. You can't imagine the benefit that you will get from daily or even constant chanting of these protective prayers. Because the secret of the paritta suttas is that the devas, the demigods, become obligated to protect us. And so they protect us in mysterious ways that we cannot see, but are nevertheless very, very effective. So please chant this Paritta Mantra, Paritta Prayers, and experience the benefits. Mm -hmm.